Hi everyone, um, welcome to another session of Late Light Streaming. So today I have a very specific feature that I want to implement. I don't know if I'm going to actually finish it in the time slot that I have tonight, but we're going to see if we can get as far as we can. So the particular feature that I want to do is this one, which um, I've been thinking about recently and uh, I got a request internally for us to want to be able to do this. So yeah, let's see if we can actually do this. So the feature request in question is essentially, let's say that I have some big Torch compile program and I don't want to, I don't want to run dynamic shapes on everything. I want to have dynamic shapes be disabled in some inner function. So what do I mean by disable all dynamic shapes in inner function? Well, that's a good question, but one way we could define dynamic shapes being disabled is that for all inputs flowing into the function that are used within this region, I want to force them to be specialized. So how exactly should we do this? I'm not sure. Let's do a crappy version that's easy to implement and then um, figure it out from there. Okay, so the crappy version that's easy to implement is um, let's just uh, let's just take a look at something that I recently wrote called comp time uh, comp time uh, static. Is it, is this recent enough? Oh, this is not a recent enough checkout. Okay, I recently landed a pull request, which lets you basically assert that something is static. Did I actually land it? Mm -hmm. I don't even remember where I landed this. Ah, uh, okay. Let's just let's just pull up a. Can you even see this? No, you can't. Let's just open up a quick screen and I'm gonna pop ahead. I'm not I'm not gonna do this on my main checkout because if I do this on my main checkout, then I will have to rebuild and I don't wanna rebuild because that'll be very boring for this stream. Okay, so what I recently added was this thing in comp time called, uh, a s oh, maybe it isn't landed yet. Oh, what happened? Static? Dynamic. Oh, it's not landed yet. Crazy. Okay, it's in one of. I've got it. Uh, I've got too many open PRs. <laughs> not enough people to review my PRs. Okay, symbolic spin. No, not that one. Value tracking. Sides oblivious. Info guard. Void replacements. Huh? Did someone revert me? Hmm. Not this one. Weird. Whatever happened? Did I get reverted? Jeez. Okay, let's 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 pickaxe this. Pickaxe, if you don't know, is this beautiful feature that lets you search for diffs that modified. Actually, I don't have a pickaxe. Enable type checking for comp time. Okay, so this hasn't, this just hasn't landed. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, Animesh reviewed this PR for me. So it should be approved. Reviewed by, not me. People with numeric usernames always get me. Okay, this is merged. Did I fail to fetch? I think I failed to fetch. That's funny.
Oh yeah, it's this one. So I recently added a thing to ComTime called assert static. And so what this does is it says, hey, you can drop this in any of your Torch Dynamo compiled code. And what it will do is when you compile it with Torch Dynamo, we will go ahead and check that this um, that this uh, this quantity is actually static. And if it isn't static, we're going to raise an exception. So um, the way it does it is uh, comp time is all implemented in this comp time module. And when we and so when you call assert static, there's a special comp time function. It's a special form. And what it does is when you actually uh, run the compiler, the compiler will call this little slug of code. And what this slug of code does is it pulls out whatever you had passed in as value and then calls a certain static on it. And what that does is it just checks, you know, is this a SimNode variable? And if it is, go ahead and, you know, tell me what this is. So all I need to do is do the same thing but inside, but instead of just checking that it's static, I just need to make it actually static. And, and making this symbol actually static is not difficult. Just all I need to do is just trigger a guard on it. But now I'm thinking, do I want another API for this? Because I actually already do have an API for this. The API I already have for this is just if I have a If I have a mark dynamic call and it's inside of a dynamic shapes region, that's an error. But if I have a mark static call, I should just make it static in this case. So that seems pretty solid. I'm also realizing that actually this, this formulation is not great because if there is something that your function closes over and you haven't captured it in this case, then um, this particular trick operating only on input arguments isn't going to work. So we need another implementation strategy if we want to reliably cause everything inside our, uh, inside our stream to actually work. Hmm. So how should we do this? Well, let's go ahead and do the easy thing first because, you know, doing the easy thing is good. And then, you know, we'll see if we have time to do the complicated thing. So our goal is to make it so that, so let, let's write a test. So what exactly do we want our test to do? Actually, give me a sec. So what we want our test to do is to say, okay, if I have a function x and then I mark static x, and let's just say the zeroth dimension, and then I return, I don't know, x plus one, then if I compile this with dynamic equals true. Then when I, oh, I actually do want this new PR can I just patch this in? Yeah, I can just patch this in. Okay. 
let's save this stash. And then after I do this, I want to assert that actually this feels a bit funny. This feels a bit silly now because actually there are lots of things I can do to make make a tensor static in this regime. Well, let's just let's just finish it off. So now I want to assert that um, that x psi zero is in fact static. Okay, looks pretty reasonable. Let's see what actually happens when I try to run this. No, I don't want to do that. I don't really want to run it on this one. While we're waiting for this to run, let's think about how to make the thing reliably work. In all situations. Yeah, okay. So this doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is because uh, when we added mark static, um, follows out of this idea of a forbidden callable. Forbidden callables are not allowed to be inside graphs because they don't they don't work. Um, actually, for mark dynamic, this is very valid because if something is static and then you try to mark it dynamic inside, like there's nothing we can do. We we can't we can't undo it and make it dynamic after the fact. That's not entirely true. If if we know what the source of the thing is, like it's an input, then I guess we could make it dynamic. But if it's some arbitrary computed quantity, we've already lost the provenance at that point. But in this case, to mark something static, we can always make something static. And if it's already static, we're we're all done. Like static's like a one-way street. Once you go static, you can't you can't go back. So let's let's fix this. Okay, so so we got our test case. And let's go ahead and check out where in here we want to modify. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the forbidden callable dispatch code. I'm not sure. It is forbidden. Attempt to trace forbidden callable. Otherwise, call function. Okay, so we're gonna unforbid. We're gonna unforbid the um, this function, and then we're gonna have to write some logic for it. Dynamo forbidden. So I guess decorators, and then it's. Um, Static. So how exactly hmm, actually this might be pretty simple. Like mark dynamic, this can be done inside graph, in which case it, it induces specialization. The tensor. Hmm. Maybe we can implement this by just, um, just having a, a if statement for if we're dynamo tracing. If dynamo tracing, tracing dynamo, whatever it's called. Huh, I swear there's a there's a there's a function that you can use to test if you're doing dynamo or not. Mm. 
I'm being torch. It's there. If Dynamo is torch dynamo supported. Hi, Moji T. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. Is this Emacs? No, this is Vim. I am a diehard Vim user since my very early days. Oh, I feel very dumb. I swear there is a, yes, Vim for the win, indeed. I swear there's a way to test if something is Dynamo or not. Uh, I don't know. I uh, By default, uh, terminals in Mac are white and I never bothered, um, I never bothered changing the default these days. Uh, defaults for life. Oh, it's is Torch Dynamo compiling. That's the, that's the ticket. Where do I, where do I import this from? Bruh, this is a, this is a, what? It's called is compiling in Torch Dynamo external utils. What a terrible name. <sighs> okay, well, whatever. That's fine. Can I even import that here? I hope I can. Let's, let's check the imports on that. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's funny. Uh, yes, Moji T. Um, so, so you probably missed the very beginning of the stream, but I'm implementing a fix for a particular bug, namely um, this bug, where I want to make it so that you can disable dynamic shapes. Can I even paste in this chat? No, I can't paste in the chat. I'm just gonna write the issue number in the chat, 758. So um, I don't even think this is the right way to implement it, but we're gonna try this for now. Uh, also, funnily enough, Automod blocked that comment because uh, <laughs> we're not supposed to talk about JITs. Well, to be clear, this is not a JIT. This is Torch Compile. Hmm. Okay, external utils, import. Yeah, I say I forgot what I'm doing, is compiling. Okay, if is compiling. Okay, and so now I just need to figure out how to induce a specialization here. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, let's do a comp time thing. So we're going out of we're going out of comp time. From how am I importing comp time? Okay, I'm importing it like this. Import comp time. I love this stuttering. JavaScript had the right idea when they put in some special support so you don't have to stutter your imports. Okay, so when this happens, I want to, uh, what, what do we call it? I don't want to call it assert static. Um, force static? Force static? Let's try it. Let's call it force static. Force static. Um, T size uh, index. But I guess we have some behavior, which is that if index is none, we do something else. For S and T size, this should be good enough. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. And now we just have to implement the comp time bit. So reminder, comp time are things that you can make available inside your Torch compiled region, and then they do something at compile time. So they're very unusual in that respect. 
So let's let's nestle this near um, assert static. I want to do the same trick as we did with assert static, which is we're going to use get local to pull out the argument we're passed, and then we're going to force static and um, let's modify this guy. This is kind of pointless. Colon E, how is that different from VSP? I have no idea. What does VSP do? Let's ask G let's ask GBT. Uh what does VSP do in Vim do? I mean, I'm not I'm not live reloading. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, well, let's try this. Oh, because I'm not, I'm not, um, split buffer keeps the same window. So I guess if I did VSP, um, oh, I, I just, I'm, I, I like the horizontal split. I don't like losing my, um, I don't like losing my, uh, what does this do? Yeah, I, I don't I don't like losing my columns. <laughs> I, I like having all my columns. So that's why I only ever use horizontal um, horizontal vertical splits? Gosh. Horizontal splits, I guess. Mm, for static. Okay, I don't I don't want to write this function because this is pointless. Okay. Is dynamic. And then Dynamic or static. So I'm just going to get the local for static. And then to force this as static, and you get the underlying. Hmm. So we do have a we do have a design choice here, which is should I error if I can't force the thing as static, or should I just silently be like, eh, whatever. What's error? That also means I have to explicitly deal with the constant variable case, which I'm just going to pass in this case. Okay, so if I have a sim node variable, then I'm just going to guard. Well, I mean, not really, which is why I did it this way. I mean, one reason to make it silent is if you don't know necessarily if it's a good idea to, if it's a good idea to like, if you can, like if you're, if, if you have some code at the call site and it doesn't, it needs to be polymorphic. It doesn't know if it's actually going to work or not. Like you might want to suppress the error so you can just unconditionally use it in all these cases. But I don't think, I don't think that's the case here. Um, so what am I doing? I'm, I'm trying to find what exactly I want. Wait. Actually, I think I think the variable has what I need. It's like guard or something. Evaluate expert. Yeah, evaluate expert. That's the stuff.
Okay, this look good? This looks pretty good. Let's ship it. Maybe complain if this isn't a int bool float variable. Cause of variable should be pretty good though. I am I'm not too worried about that. Okay, does our test pass? Let's try our test pass. Static mech Todd. What file is this in? Comp time. Let's also ask lint what it thinks. Hmm. Constant variable is not defined. Oh yeah, that is a bug. Let's go ahead and import that. Variables constant, import constant variable. And look at that. No, 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 I don't want to edit. Okay, let's reload. My pie's happy, everyone's happy. Everyone loves muddy puddles. <laughs> Someone may have been reading their kid too much Pepepay. Okay, we're all done. Wonderful, it only took us 20 minutes. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it actually solves what was originally asked for, so. Make torch dynamo. Mark static, work inside graph. Actually, you know, we can probably make mark dynamic work, but it, it's gonna require some doing. So I don't wanna do that tonight. Let's go ahead and submit this. Oh, but I can't submit this. Uh, okay, let's, I have a culprit. Well, <laughs> I don't wanna clobber this checkout. This checkout? Can I clobber this checkout? Oh, I don't want to clobber this checkout. This checkout should be okay, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so the problem with this approach is that um, in problematic cases uh, where I wanna actually disable uh, dynamic shapes, um, they may not actually be coming in as argument. Like actually in the common case, you're gonna be calling some module. It might be like, okay, well, it's not gonna be attributes on the module because the attributes on the module are gonna stay the same. Hmm. This might be actually fine for the particular use case. What I'm just thinking is like, maybe there's some random integer floating around and it's wobbling and you don't want it to wobble and you want that to be static. Ba basically, you can't get your grubby hands on the thing. So you need you need Dynamo to deal with it for you automatically. Like, like you basically want the same thing that, you know, dynamic equals false does, right? Like dynamic false doesn't care if you pass in the thing as an argument where it comes in via a free variable. It always makes it static in that case. So oh, how are we gonna do this? Oh, do we want a higher order operator? I don't want a higher order operator. I do need some sort of combinator that's gonna change what happens inside the dynamo tracing process. Do I really need that? I just need that. Do we have any precedent for this? Ugh, I can't think of any precedents. I mean, I mean, we support context managers and stuff like that. We do support context managers. Do I want a context manager? What if I just change the setting of the configuration 
in comp time. Is that a bad idea? It's kind of a bad idea for a number of reasons. One reason it's a bad idea is that there's no guarantee that changing the configuration is actually going to do anything. And indeed, if you've actually already allocated the symbolic sizes outside of the compile region you're compiling, then um, then you're stuck. You are, you actually you actually need to do more work to like force them to be static on the inside. That's why that's why like um, the patch we just sent is so nice because. Because I don't, I don't have to worry about that. You just tell me what I'm, what I'm feeding, and then I just do it. Hmm. What else can we do? What a pain. Okay, well, uh, this is getting thorny enough that I, I want to actually think about this. Okay, so let's um, API constraints. So let's assume that. For now, let's assume some decorator type thing. Probably torch compile. Literally. How are we gonna implement this? So this means this means we have a clear point in time when we enter the region. And when we exit it, and we can put in whatever code. We want to put whatever code we want on the entry and the exit region. Okay, so what am I going to put in the code region? So part of the problem is when I'm in the code region, I can't actually. Um, I'm actually kind of in trouble because I can't actually make everything static because I don't know if it's going to get used. Like, let's say that, uh, let's just look at this example, right? Like, I don't want Y to turn static when I do this because, because, I, only, because I only end up using X inside here. So I only want X to turn static. So I need to wait for things to get used. What does it even mean for something to be used? Like, if I take X as an input and return X, does that count as being used? If I like access y somehow, like a free variable, and then I don't do anything with that, is that kind of used? So what do I want? Well, when I say something dyna is dynamic equals false, I'm making a statement about the subgraph I'm creating, right? I'm saying something like this subgraph is going to be static. Like, like that's that's really, I mean. When I'm not embedded inside another compiled region, like the reason I do this is because I don't want to have to recompile stuff. Hmm. Does this make sense? Does it make sense to glue on a dynamic piece on top of a static piece? So I'm hesitating. What I'm hesitating about is like, hmm, geez. Well, I guess we're not finishing this feature today. Ah, oh, I think we're 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 going to have to. I think my princess is another castle. Let's write another bug report, and then we'll we'll file. <laughs> we'll file. We'll, we'll file this away for another day. Um, I am. I think I got time to do something else after we write this bug for it. Okay. So what do I want? So I want a way. Actually, thanks, MojiT. That's why I do these streams. Please let me know if there's anything I can explain in more detail or any questions you want answered. That's why I am streaming. Okay, so basically, conceptually, what I'm thinking about here is like, so we have this compile time problem in Dynamo. And one way to solve compile time problems is like to do it less. So like, let's say that I have a function inside of a, a big Dynamo thing and I'm looping over the function for some reason, but I'm always feeding it like the same stuff, 
right? I don't want to cop. I don't want to compile like twenty copies of this function. I want to. I want to compile it only once. So, so there's this concept of like, I don't know, a loop block, Dynamo, but it's not a loop block. <sighs> I don't even know how I'm going to find this in title block. Loop. I mean, this sort of counts. Now, this is sort of an old version of the bug that I'm trying to articulate right now. Maybe we didn't file an issue for this. Mm, okay, one more try. I want to look at the issues that I filed and see if it's in them. Hmm. I filed too many issues, lol. <laughs> so many issues. Oh, come on. Um, let's try to search for loop, maybe. Block. Body. Mm. Higher. Okay. All right. So um, what I want, I want a how am I going to string this? A way to designate a portion of torch compiled as a block that is compiled separately. but less disruptive than a graph break. Yeah, because there's actually a bunch of things going on here. So uh, I might want to discuss this. Yeah, let's, let's, let's slap the needs discussion label on this. What? Where's the needs discussion label? Who got rid of the news discussion label? Triage review. Let's let's give triage review. Okay. So how how exactly I'm going to describe this? There are a few uh, motivating use cases for for this. File time previously filed as varying the compile time options for different regions of the Dynamo graph. The essential model here is that I ha may have some subcomponent of my Dynamo, uh, uh, my Torch Compile program, which I would like to compile separately from the rest for some reason. In the compile time use case, maybe this is a loop body that I don't want to unroll 20 times, I want to compile it only once and reuse it all those times. In the varying compile time use case, I might have a regular model that I want to have regular dynamic shapes support, but in this particular region, I want my code all specialized with static shapes. The ordinary tool for breaking up Torch Compile program is introducing a graph break. However, because we don't, and now I need to find Vaz's PR.
Uh, did Vaz even quote the original issue? Okay, here we go. Well, we, we don't support uh, graph breaking inside inline functions. Graph break can end up being pretty disruptive. Also, you might consider to the rest of the graph structure. Having the whole graph, but having only partitioned out internally might be useful. Hmm. Export reasons so you don't true graph break. You want some something a little weaker. So what exactly would this do? inner region should have its own guards. In fact, it needs an entirely separate Dynamo instance. This is important because we can't For loop bodies, this is important because there may be loop carried variables that get updated and we need to reify the side effects, e.g. the normal graph brick way for the very compile time options if you have a static segment. Inside an otherwise dynamic program, you need to do a guard dispatch to go to the correct static program. The outer Dynamo instance should somehow incorporate the inner Dynamo instance in some way. For example, it can trace directly through the modified bytecode produced by the inner Dynamo instance. I'm not sure how you're actually going to do the loop this way. Alternatives for the for the loop use case, you could potentially alternately just define a higher order op that supports looping. Typically, the higher order op wouldn't support any Python mutation on the inside. Maybe that's fine. Hmm. to apply the loop. But instead of tracing into the compiled function, it just emits a call directly to it. 
and the compiled function is assumed to be well behaved in some sense. If that's enough, a topmost. Hmm. The outer Dynamo instance uses a partitioner similar to optimized EDB partitioner to separate out the already compiled products so we don't try to send them to AOT Autogram. So for example, suppose you have four Twenty hmm. and suppose G is marked. to be a block. Hmm. I suppose G is marked a block. Then in normal Animal tracing, we trace up until the G call. Then we trigger an inner Dynamo instance, which produces a compiled G bytecode, which we incorporate directly into the The outer graph finally looks like, okay, range 20 is too much. So it looks like x equals fy. Well, let's, let's just, You know what? No, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna elaborate. This x zero. Assume f is inline here, and then x one equals compiled g. No bytecode. No residual bytecode. X zero. And then we partition the graph into four segments and then compile them individually. The compiled segments don't need more compiling, just pass through. And, and this will work even if you like even if you have like extra stuff in between these. Hmm, does this work? Yeah, yeah, this works. Okay. Okay, well, well, that's what happened <laughs> to the rest of this bug. Oh.
Okay, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone.